In this video, I will show you how to finally do something when Zebex detects a problem. By now, we have talked about items and triggers, but you had to check the Zebex web frontend to see whether there is a problem. That's where actions come into play. Let's check the web interface and go to Configuration Actions. It's important to note that there are three kinds of actions, as you see in the top right corner. In this video, I will deal with actions that are connected to triggers, so if a trigger indicates a problem, I want to do something about it. The other two kinds are for the automatic discovery, where Zabbix scans your network for new computers, and the auto-registration, where hosts running Zabbix agents can register to the Zabbix server automatically. Let's take a look at the default action called Report Problems to Zabbix Administrators. The important aspects of an action are the conditions and the operations. Whenever a trigger-based event happens, Zabbix will look through all your actions and determine which ones to run. It does not stop at the first action, but will run all actions that match the given conditions. In this case, it will run if the host is not in a maintenance state and the trigger indicates a problem. In such a case, the action will send a message to the group of Zabbix administrators. Now when I click on the name of the action, I can edit it. On the top you see three tabs called Action, Conditions and Operations. On this Action tab, you can rename the action if you like. The default operation step duration determines how long each step in an escalation will take. I will deal with this later. But one hour is way too much for me, so I change it to 60 seconds. These settings determine how an alert message will look like. The body is just used in emails. If you send SMS to your cell phone, you just use the subject field. As you see, Zabbix uses a lot of macros here to give you detailed information in your alert message. You will probably customize the message to contain the information you need. Check the documentation to see which macros are available in notifications. Now let's move to the Conditions tab. You see the two conditions here that have to be true to make this action be run. The type of calculation sets whether any or all of these conditions have to match. The AND slash OR type is a bit confusing. It just means that all conditions have to be true, but if you specify the same kind of condition multiple times, then at least one of these conditions must be true. You can add further conditions here, like you want a certain application or host group to be concerned, but you shouldn't make actions too specific unless you have to. For example, a condition on a specific trigger is a very rare case. Instead, try to use applications of items, groups of hosts or certain host templates. Now let's take a look at the Operations tab. I added the operation that sends a message. Ignore the steps for the moment. Generally, there are two types of action. The default is Send Message, which will send a message through one of the available media types. For example, via email, SMS or Jabra. You can send a message to entire user groups or to individual users. Send only to specifies the kind of media. If you set it to all, then the user will be alerted through all media that are configured for that user. Most users will only have email configured, so that's a good default. When you untick the default message checkbox, you can override the default message format that you specified on the first action tab. And on the conditions tab, you can add another condition so that this operation step is only performed if this condition is true. You will see the use of that in the next video about escalations. But instead of sending a message, you can also execute a remote command. Zabbix can use ways like IPMI, Secure Shell, or Telnet to do something on a certain computer. My favorite option is the custom script though. This means Zabbix will run a shell command from the Zabbix agent on a remote host. That concludes this video about the general properties of an action. In the next video, I will give you an example of an action that provides a workaround for a broken web server.